Hello my soccer universe, first Iberian review of the new year. Yes, it has been a while since the first games already happened before the new year, but now I find the time finally and we have actually quite a few things to cover. We have not only two rounds in each Portugal and Spain, but we also have a rather interesting cup round uh, in Spain. Um, it was also won in Portugal, but we... We'll talk about the upcoming cup games there uh, a little bit more. Uh, it was in a way, in a way, a wild um, two and a half weeks since coming back from the you know World Cup break and and so on, with all the big teams kind of not knowing where they are, and especially in Portugal, we had a huge shocker with the leaders being completely uh, devastated, uh, and in Spain. Yes, we had kind of a two-way race for the title, but while Barcelona were in the lead, if I would have made this video just a few days ago, let's say Thursday, I, I would have said it all seems like Real Madrid is going to take this league by the scruff of the neck and going to run away with it. And then this weekend happened and suddenly it's the other way around again. Uh, it's so such huge pend pendulum swings now in La Liga, and you you will see the model is actually uh, reacting quite sensitively to it, just because uh, Barcelona will have the Clásico at home, and with home field uh, advantage, they have a clear advantage there, at least mathematically. So uh, while I personally think there will be many twists and turns coming. In this title race, uh, this is the reason why one may say that Barcelona are now the title favorites, although I personally don't quite feel like it. I would say let's start in Portugal because we had a major, major shocker. Uh, Braga, remember, they started the season out really, really, really well. I think with a 3 3 even, even against sports, sporting, and so on, but then fell a little bit by the wayside. Well, they came back with a bang. Uh, in the last game of uh, 2022, they beat Benfica 3 0 with Ruiz and uh, braced by Orta, who rightfully was called up for the Portuguese World Cup, Cup, Cup squad, giving Benfica a real thumping. Uh, and yes, Benfica, as we'll see, are still leaders and probably kind of comfortably so. But that was a, a really an exclamation point that Braga is probably going to break the big three this year in Portugal. And it also means I really should get a Braga shirt sooner, more sooner than later. At the same time, the big other two big ones are Porto 5-1 over Aruca and Sporting at Passos, uh, against Passos 3-0. That was all, um, you know, kind of as planned. However, it, in the round that happened just in, in the last week, I mean, um, Braga confirming uh, their uh, good, good run with now with a hat-trick by Orta uh, with only Maderos in, 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 in between. Benfica coming back with a, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Labor win against Paul Proporti Monange. Porto only nil nil at Casa Pia, so they're losing points. And then Maritimo beating Sporting. So uh, it was really Braga's two rounds to make up a whole lot of the ground and solidify a spot in the top three. And top three in Portugal means that you have Champions League qualification. So that's uh, already a big one. Also, shout out to Casa Pia for holding on up there, uh, as we will see in the table. Because if we look at it, Casa Pia in fifth, Sporting at the moment only in fourth place with Braga sitting in second, a point ahead of Porto. One would still think that it's, uh, if anyone is going to catch Benfica, it is six points, seven points to uh, Porto. It's more likely Porto, but this Braga team is really, really convincing, and uh, I think it's it's a fun team to watch. We also have and the other team that's usually in there, too good for the battle uh, or the carnage below, is of course Vitoria de Guimarães. Other than that, it is really, really, really wild that a team like Gilles Vicente, who had a really outstanding last season, is suddenly fully in a relegation battle. Um, Portugal below the top teams, always, always. Um, interesting, but it's always a dog fight. Uh, especially when you look at the uh, finals, and it seems like the passes this time are going uh, down. Passes not too long ago over in Europe, 
This is how crazy it is. Um, up top, Braga is now in third place to be expected and Casa Pia just ahead of uh, Guimaraes. So really, really interesting. And also Boavista, who have been kind of mid-table, if not a relegation threatened, also moving up a teeny bit. Um, if we go further, we have, of course, a cup round come, come, coming up, uh, starting already tonight. Not really an outstanding fixture except for one, Braga against Vitoria de Guimaraes, which is a local derby. However, we all know that Braga is gonna should win that one, but you know the magic of the cup. Uh, what's more mad, magic, of course, uh, are certain teams that are in there, like Lejos up there. Very interesting, Chris, with a cricket bat and a tennis uh, uh, racket. Uh, then we have Lank, FC Vilvardens, uh, which is also a weird story with the company taking over and changing the colors. And of course, a Rabo de Peche with a cut fish in the crest. Those are the things that always interest me when I make those cup fixtures to get uh, the teeny tiny clubs in there. Once we get back from the cup round, we have, of course, um, I give you two, the next two rounds for um, the... Uh, Liga Portugal, uh, Benfica against Sporting is probably already a tie that should warrant <laughs> another video. Uh, it's basically a last chance if Sporting wants to get into anything. Although I don't, th I, I, I think this time it will be rather one-sided. Portugal's family cow and Braga against Boa Vista is also kind of a local uh, duel because it's all up there in the same region. And then the week after, um, we have Santa Clara against Mefica, the two teams with more or less the same crest against Israel. Again, Vittorio Guimaraes against Porto. Again, kind of a local derby. So, uh, Gima, uh, there's always this in this area, there's always something happening uh, there for sure. Okay, let's go over to Spain and I'm gonna split it now. I'm not gonna do it. Um, Chronologically, I was first gonna talk only about La Liga, and you know, it, it was kind of a slow getting back into, especially for uh, for me watch, watching. Um, but it got interesting, you know. Um, Betis against Athletic Club. I actually thought this is a great match. It was not. It was a nil-nil draw. Atletico actually looking over good against Elche, although it was a red card fest uh, that Joao Felix um, decided in the 56, and then Morata. Scoring the second one, Joao Felix, who now is on the way to Chelsea. Finally, he's going to get out of the grip of Simeone. Let's see how he will perform uh, in London, a team that is similarly in trouble. Uh, Real Madrid, it was not pretty what they did against Valladolid. Um, however, in the end, the guard got down. There were a few penalty calls in there. Both probably could have, should have been a penalty and only one was. Uh, Benzema converting that one, and then Benzema gets a late one. Uh, Via Valladolid almost, almost getting the upset. The upset is what Espanyol uh, got at Barca, where after um, Marcos Alonso, it wasn't about the Marcos Alonso game, uh, took the early lead. You really thought that Espanyol is going to be now in a heap of trouble and Barca oh, just going to roll over. Far from it. Uh, the longer the game uh, went, the more Barcelona looked that they're completely lost, and then it happened. I mean, the game was already with uh, quite a few yellow cards, and uh, Matteo Lajos, of course, was uh, refereeing. Uh, at the point when he gives the penalty that Marcos Alonso gave, gave away and Jose Lu converts, we were on five yellow cards. And then an incredible sequence that, honestly, if you feel the chance, just re watch this. We have between the penalty in the 73rd. And uh, kind of the 80th, 80th, 83rd minute, in these 10 minutes, I think there was only two minutes of a plate. We had a bunch of yellow cards. We had loads of discussions with, with the referee. We had two red cards given, one in the same uh, sequence, where first, Vin where first Vinicius Ju uh, Sousa well, was given one, and then in the same sequence with another Espanol player, but it turned out that uh, he did not really hit uh, Lewandowski all that hard. So that was that one was rescinded and Laos completely lost control of the game. And as far as I hear now, he's actually given a little bit of um, a thinking break in in a way because he definitely, definitely lost control of the game. Just one yellow card after another. He gave, all, I think, even more than in the Netherlands-Argentina game. 
absolutely disgraceful performance. On the other side, it's rather entertaining to see a referee, especially one as mouthy as Laos, um, <laughs> completely lo losing it late on. There were chances for Barcelona to win it. However, Bar uh, Espanyol hold on to the draw. And of course, the other thing is that Lewandowski played despite him actually receiving a record because Barcelona appealed, tried to appeal themselves through and maybe even having play against Atleti, which honestly would have been a little bit too much. He was then duly suspended for the three games, as unjustified as those three games were, but it, the, the, the feeling was not right that you could just by appeal have him play and play and play and play. Uh, also, a first mention for Villarreal, the team that I'm wearing, uh, back in the new stadium, which looks now really like a nice English sta stadium. Uh, finding us down to Cavani uh, in the 21st. However, Chukwese equalizes and then very late on, uh, fourth newly crowned world champion gets a winner for Villarreal in the Derby de la Comunidad. Uh, pretty big one for uh, the yellow submarine. Kind of setting things along the way. Kike Setien might actually get something going and yes, something going. He definitely did because they definitely um, confirmed the result with a totally deserved 2-1 win over Real Madrid. A result that almost no one saw coming. Yes, Real Madrid with injuries. Real Madrid for the first time in the history had no Spanish player. So I honestly don't want to hear Real Madrid fans complaining that there are no Real Madrid players in a Spanish squad, you know. If you don't have many Spanish players yourself, I guess that's the problem. Uh, you know, Pino gave Villarreal a very deserved lead. They should have already led at the half, uh, especially what uh, Moreno was doing. Gerard Moreno was really uh, next level and Real Madrid looking sluggish. Yes, creating chances, but all rather slow, never really fine finding the breakthrough. And the longer the game went on, the, uh, the more insecure. They seemed. Uh, then there were two penalties in the 60th and the 63rd. First, uh, Benzema can equalize, then Moreno uh, go ahead. Both penalties rather ridiculous handballs, especially the one uh, that Alaba gave away. He is falling down and the ball hits him. Should never have been a penalty. However, that should not distract from the fact that Villarreal completely deserved that one win. Uh, we had a very entertaining uh, Catalan derby between Espanyol and Girona. Uh, Real Sociedad beating Almeria to, uh, to, to nil and then Betis uh, were lucky to get a win at Rayo. Rayo definitely would have deserved an equalizer there. Uh, they got a late, e uh, then, no, not late, but Palazon scored a really brilliant equalizer, but then there was kind of a fractional offside in there. As I said, Rayo would have deserved an equalizer there. Uh, Sevilla also get a win. This is rare these days. And then the big one big between Atletico and Barcelona and everything that we saw pointed towards the fact that Barcelona might be a little bit of trouble. However, maybe the result of Villarreal boosted them a little bit or they just had a better day. They played maybe for a little bit like Barcelona, but this game was a rather rough watch. And for the most times, it's for most part of the game, it seemed like the two teams had swatch, uh, switched identities. Because it was Atletico creating chances of varying degrees, while Barcelona just gave a dogged fight uh, that was exemplified then by the double red card in stoppage time, when Savic and Torres uh, just wrestle with each other like it was uh, the Olympics, and both get duly sent off. Then uh, Barcelona clears a few times uh, close to or just on the line, and hang on to a pretty big win through Dembélé. Credit also to the goal that has been scored by Barra Barcelona because I thought it was actually a nice one, but that was a rather ugly win. And I didn't see the game um, because I was watching Milan at the same time. I did uh, see highlights. I heard some 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 discussions from what I get. The game may have been entertaining, but it was quality-wise a rather rather rough watch. And now we also have Shaw uh going away, and it was the last chance for Atleti basically to get maybe into a potential title race, which was they never had a chance. Anyway, Athletic Club with a second nil-nil to start the year, also not lo lo looking good. So, in the standings now, uh, as I said, Athletic Club now falling only to seventh, but 
I have a feeling that this top seven that uh, sticks. Sevilla is not in uh, the relegation zone any, any, any anymore, but there are a few teams in there where it looks a little bit dangerous. I mean, Celta and Sevilla were definitely not teams that one would have expected down there. Uh, and also S. Espanol suddenly, despite having two relatively good, good performances, but no only draws gets you in trouble. Elche is going down. Up top, you see, it is slight. It is a uh, not only slight. It, it, it's a two-third advantage for Barcelona already over Real Madrid. However, this can change rather rather quickly. But the three-point advantage with the home game at the Camp Nou might make a big difference. We have Real Sociedad and Real Betis in the Atleti now only in fifth place. We are Real also hanging in there. They have been rising quite uh, fast. So watch that space. We are Real might actually get into the Champions League as we predicted. Kike sets against tactics might just work, uh, which is also reflected in the uh, expected settings. Atletico still in there, Atletico still in there, but Villarreal is getting closer and closer. And if Atletico uh, continue their fall, uh, it might not work in the, in, in the favor at the moment. Um, we have, uh, of course, Barcelona winning the league with three points. Uh, and on the on, on the bottom, we have Valladolid, Cadiz and Elche going down. Elche seem set on uh, to go down, as I said, the top seven are the top seven. Um, the, the next two rounds are, of course, now affected by this crazy tournament in Saudi Arabia called Super Cup that I will not talk about. But the last two fixtures are the four teams that are going to the Super Cup. And yes, uh, say about it what they want. I, all I'm saying is Super Cup. Uh, we, though we do have potentially a big one in Real Sociedad against Athletic Club, that uh, could be an interesting one. It's, of course, a big rivalry there. Also, Celta against Villarreal. If Celta weren't so dour, could be an interesting game to start it all off. And then the week after, um, what do we have? We don't have really. We have Athletic Club against Real Madrid. I think that's the big one. There, uh, I don't think a Barcelona against Getafe warrants uh, being played that early at the Saturday four o'clock spot, which is usually the one where the top uh, the the top match is played. Um, cup round, most of it as expected. I gotta say, Espanol against Celta. Celta had the lead, uh, but the longer the game went on, Espanol could. Take, take, take it into overtime and then it was a rather easy win for Espanyol in the end. Other than that, all the results went as expected. Maybe that um, Real Madrid only win 1-0 uh, at Casareño is probably was a little bit of the disappointment. A uh, uh, goal coming through Rodrigo in the 69th minute. But other than that, it was all fine. Uh, also, Real Madrid only 1-0 over Locoron. Yes, the big one though was... CF Intercity, a team that up until that point I have never heard, gave Barcelona a true run for the money. Barcelona took three times the lead, <laughs> four times actually, but three times in re re regulation the lead and three times uh, Soldevia could equalize. And all of those came in the second half. I mean, the early goal through uh, Rojo, you really thought that uh, Barcelona can't, can't, can't take this. No. They get an equalizer, and then Belen, a 6 6 equalizer. So the Villa in the 74th gets an equalizer. But Rafinha immediately answers only for in the 86 to get another equalizer and a hat trick for Sol de Villa. Do you know who was the last player who scored a hat trick against Barcelona? Kylian Mbappe for PSG. So that's that's uh, how historic that uh, performance was. And then Ansu Fati gets the winner in the 103rd minute. Could have buried an 5 3. But Intercity, uh, close, I think, to Alicante, a, a really, really strong showing. And I want to know a little bit more behind the name Intercity, to be honest. We already have the draw and Barcelona is the one that got the easiest team of the remaining ones with uh, Ceuta, which actually is an enclave in Mor within Morocco. Uh, the big one, of course, Villarreal against Real Madrid. That's a very, very interesting tie right there. Curious to see how this will end up. That was it for me from the Iberian Pan Peninsula for now. Loads of interesting things. I'm slowly getting into uh, those two leagues. I really want to see how Braga uh, will, will be doing. I really would love to see um, a little bit change of the Champions League team uh, within uh, La Liga as well. Because, you know, let's not have Atleti and Sevilla for once in there and get some new blood. This may could make it very interesting. In any case, 
Drop a line below if you want to add anything. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.